course, there is certainly a lot of economic information, Danny, as you just began to talk about CPI and PPI and, you know, consumer price index and the producer's price index both gave us a lot of information this week. Some of it was a little disappointing, Derek. Right. It was it was both numbers were a little bit hotter than expected, particularly the PPI, where we saw a 0.7 percent month on month increase after a down month on month number last month. In addition, we also saw a retail sales number this week that was better than expected, up about 6.4 percent. So the consumer continues to do well. Uh, Inflation continues to be persistent. And the Atlanta Fed is forecasting 2.4 percent growth in Q1. So those that are waiting for a recession have more have longer to wait. And of course, that just means that they could be pushing it down the road. You know, anytime that you've seen an inverted yield curve of this magnitude, we've seen a recession. So there is a likelihood, a high likelihood that we could see something late 23 and 24. But as you point out, the consumer continues to spend. It could be in part that there's still a lot of transfer payments, including the increase of Social Security of more than eight and a half percent. Right. And I didn't realize there are 66 million Americans that are getting Social Security. So that's a significant voting block, if you will, or spending block, I should say. In addition, the other thing with the labor market is, you know, it's so hard to find employees. What it looks like is employers are hoarding folks. Now, they may not be working the 40 hour work week, but it's much easier to hold an employee than to have to retrain one if the economy were a rebound. So that seems to be also a reason for the stunning persistence in the labor market. And that might change, though, as, as the end of the year. And I do agree there's probably some employee hoarding going on. But all told, what it meant is that the 10 year Treasury began to spike on Friday. It hit as high as 3.9%. And that is a big move from where it's been. Right. Almost back to the highs we made in December when the stock market, as you know, was significantly lower. In addition, and this kind of blew my socks up, I saw the six month Treasury bill traded up to 5% today, which is the highest it's been since 2007 and compares pretty favorably to what the earnings yield is on the S&P, which is 5.08%. So fixed income, particularly on the short end of the yield curve, looks pretty attractive relative to where it's been in the past. You know, you talked about sticky inflation. Of course, we've been talking about this for a long time. And part of this is what another topic that we've covered for years, that at some point the bill is going to come due. The bill of excessive spending and, of course, that driving up interest rates, it, that is really in front of us at the moment. Right. And when you're talking about the bill, you're talking about the Fed with quantitative easing and also the fiscal profligacy that's been going on in Washington, most recently a $1.7 trillion bill in December. Because as one of our research partners likes to point out, we have to refinance 50% of the of the debt in the next three years. And currently, that debt is paying 1.8%, significantly different rate than what we're currently seeing. Yeah. So imagine tripling the interest rate that you pay on your loan at home, folks. That is what we're talking about doing on 50% of the incredible amount of debt that's out there. So that what that's going to do is going to crowd out a lot of things. It is Now, we're not saying this could happen, but you could be spending as much in a, in a country on interest on the debt as you do to defend the country. Right, and that's what some of the forecasts are suggesting. So there are clearly difficult choices ahead. And, you know, one of the things we try to do as an investment candidate is to try to see around the corners. And if tax policy is going to change in the coming years, that has to be reflected in what we're doing with our portfolios. And so reason this is not the time to set it and forget it. And that doesn't mean that you don't have to stay the course. You really should consider how your portfolio is comprised. In other words, should you rebalance? Should you reevaluate your risk? Active versus passive investing. This all goes into what we do on a daily basis that is open to anyone who reaches out. 